have to remind myself to turn on the microphone. Okay, bad morning, everybody. It is uh, Saturday once again, coming up on 10 a.m., which means it's time for a new episode of Bad Saturday Morning. Instead of our uh, musical pre-roll, as usual, I'm going to show a, a short film. So uh, as we get ready for Space Academy this week, watch this. <laughs> Just before lunch one day, a puppet show was put on at school. It was called Mr. Bungle Goes to Lunch. It was fun to watch. In the puppet show, Mr. Bungle came to the boys' room on his way to lunch. He looked at his hands. His hands were dirty, and his hair was messy. But Mr. Bungle didn't stop to wash his hands or comb his hair. He went right to lunch. <laughs> then, instead of getting into line at the lunchroom, Mr. Bungle pushed everyone aside and went right to the front. Even though this made the children laugh, no one thought that was a fair thing to do. Then, in the lunchroom, Mr. Bungle was so clumsy and impolite that he knocked over everything and no one wanted to sit next to him. And when he finally knocked his own tray off the table, that was the end of the puppet show. The children knew that even though Mr. Bungle was funny to watch, he wouldn't be much fun to eat with. Phil knew that a Mr. Bungle wouldn't have many friends. He wouldn't want to be like Mr. Bungle. Later, Miss Brown said it was time for the children who ate in the cafeteria to go to lunch. She hoped there weren't any Mr. Bungles in this room. Phil stopped to return a book to Miss Brown while his friends went on to the lunchroom. He would have to catch up with them later. On his way to catch up with his friends, Phil almost walked past the boys' room, but he stopped and thought. Were his hands clean? No, they were a little dirty. Phil remembered that Mr. Bungle didn't wash his hands. Mr. Bungle's hair was messy, too. Phil didn't want to be like Mr. Bungle. Inside the boys' room, Phil was surprised to see some of his friends washing their hands, too. Phil washed his hands well, with lots of soap. Then he rinsed the soap off. Phil dried his hands well, too. When he was finished, he threw the paper towel in the basket where it belonged. And then he made sure that his hair looked neat. Now, Phil and his friends were ready for lunch. There was a line of children waiting to get into the lunchroom when Phil got there. He saw some boys he knew at the front of the line. They waved for him to go up to the front with them. But Phil didn't want to break into line as Mr. Bungle did. So Phil went to the end. That was the fair thing to do. He would see his other friends inside the lunchroom. The line moved very fast, and soon Phil was inside. First he picked up his tray. Then he got his silverware. He put his knife, fork, and spoon neatly on the tray. And then he slid his tray along. He always enjoyed looking at the good food in the cafeteria. It tasted good and was good for him, too. Instead of having a sandwich today, Phil decided to take the hot lunch. Phil took some bread and butter, too, and he knew what else he wanted, milk.
But Alice took the last carton on the tray. Maybe there was more milk. So he said, may I please have some milk? Phil remembered to say, may I, and please. That was very polite. Yes, there was more milk. Phil remembered to say, thank you, when he took the carton of milk. Phil had good manners. He didn't want to be like Mr. Bungle in the lunchroom. Phil didn't want to forget his dessert. The cake looked delicious. At the end of the line, the lunchroom supervisor said she had noticed how polite Phil was, and she smiled at him. She wouldn't smile at a Mr. Bungle. Phil went to the table where his friends were. He put his tray down carefully, pulled out his chair quietly, and sat down. He knew his friends wouldn't like a noisy Mr. Bungle at their table. There was someone Phil liked, Freddy. He always brought his lunch from home. It looked good. Freddy had a sandwich, an apple, a cookie, and milk. Before Phil began to eat, he always put a napkin on his lap. So did Freddy. Everyone liked Freddy. He was very polite. For example, if he had food in his mouth when someone talked to him, he always took time to chew the food with his mouth closed and swallow before he answered. Phil noticed how straight and tall Freddy usually sat. Freddy kept his feet on the floor, too. Phil would rather be like Freddy than like Mr. Bungle. Another polite person everyone liked was Alice. For example, when Alice sneezed, she covered her mouth and nose. This protected her friends at the table from any germs. While Phil and his friends ate, a boy ran past their table. You shouldn't run in the lunchroom. Only Mr. Bungle would do that. Phil and his friends wouldn't like to have a Mr. Bungle at their table. Then lunchtime wouldn't be as much fun as it is. Phil ate slowly and enjoyed his lunch. Finally, he had eaten everything except his dessert. He saved his cake for last. Only a Mr. Bungle would eat his dessert before he had finished the rest of his lunch. And Phil wasn't a Mr. Bungle. The cake was good. Phil drank his milk carefully. Some children are messy when they drink milk, but not Phil. As each of Phil's friends finished, they didn't leave the table, but waited for all the others to finish eating too. Phil was the last one done. He wiped his mouth and hands carefully with his napkin. Then he cleaned the table where he sat. He didn't want to leave his place at the table dirty. Everyone at the table cleaned his own place well. But look at that table. It was left very messy. Phil thought a Mr. Bungle must have sat there. But Phil didn't want to be like Mr. Bungle. So he put his chair neatly into place. And his table looked fine. Not a piece of paper or scrap of food was left on it. No, Mr. Bungle sat here. Phil's friends were careful to put their waste papers and empty milk cartons where they belonged. In this way, they helped keep the lunchroom clean. Phil was certain that Mr. Bungle wouldn't put his paper in the waste basket and his empty carton on the milk tray. Mr. Bungle probably wouldn't bother to put his lunch tray in the right place either, but Phil and his friends did. Lunch was good today. And then Miss Brown told Phil and his friends how proud she was of them. They had left their table the neatest in the lunchroom. No one here was a Mr. Bungle, and no one wanted to be. Are you like Mr. Bungle? Mr. Bungle is a shame because he spoils lunchtime. Don't be like Mr. Bungle. Have good lunchtime manners, and lunch will be more fun for everyone. Okay, thank you, Phil. And thank you, legendary Mr. Bungle. 
I've seen that uh, I've seen that film many many times over the years, and it gets more infuriating each time. <laughs> Uh, this uh, uh, bad morning. I almost said good morning. This this, this is bad morning. Cause this is bad Saturday, uh, as always. I'm Keith at uh, here at uh, Fifty Street Studios. Let me just introduce my co-host uh, immediately here. This is this is Mike from the Mr. Fox Guy Channel. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Hey, everybody. Bad morning. Yeah, bad morning. Yeah, we we've, we've <laughs> both seen the the Lunchroom Manners films many times. I, I grew up with it. They used to show it on 60 millimeter film at my uh, school when I was in grade school. It was uh, it was pretty funny back then. Uh, but these days, <laughs> it's it's so it's so controlling and so so infuriating. Yeah. And the thing that I find the thing that I find most unrealistic about it, the thing that I that I do not accept the thing that I balk at the most is at the end when he says that Mr. Bungle is ashamed. I do not believe that Mr. Bungle feels shame. I I, no. I, I do not accept that at all. Anyway, he legally changed his name to Mr. Bungle. I think he's fully aware of yeah. what's, what he <laughs> yeah. does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, it is uh, Saturday morning, 10 a.m., which means it's time for another bad Saturday morning. But this week we're going to show some stuff we like. Um, by a special request from Mike himself, last week he he pleaded for more Space Academy, which yes, is, yes. is one of the one of the things I showed early on in the uh, Bad Saturday Morning series, and Mike had never seen it or heard of it before, and he was uh, flabbergasted I'm by hooked. it. I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. hooked. And I'm uh, we've got seven people watching. That's I think one of those is Mike. So we've got six people. Yeah. Six people on Twitch, one person watching on uh, YouTube. I'm broadcasting on the ThinkBolt channel on YouTube, my, my personal YouTube channel, because we still can't live stream uh, on the 50th Street uh, uh, Studio That's YouTube. Stupid. We should we should be able to in uh, February, I'm, I'm hoping, anyway. Anyway, we will be watching... Carol is here. Hi, Carol. We will be watching Space Academy. It is a uh, Saturday morning uh, live-action science fiction show made by Filmation, the uh, famously awful uh, production company that brought us Fat Albert and He-Man and uh, uh, the Archies. So many terrible, terrible shows. But they produced a few gems every once in a while, one of which is Space Academy, which was which appeared on TV in the fall of 1977, which is the same year that Star Wars came out, which means they produced it before Star Wars was at uh, mm -hmm. at cinemas, so it was not influenced by Star Wars. It came out at exactly the right time. Um, it was heavily influenced by Star Trek, and I, when I showed this before, I presented it as a, a lost Star Trek series because it really looks like Next Generation. Mm. It look it looks like Next Generation yep. for kids. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna watch two episodes of that, and then we're gonna watch two episodes of a spinoff series called Jason of Star Command, which. Uh, which uh, appeared the year after that, seventy-eight, I think, and uh, and it was produced like uh, uh, like an old school uh, adventure serial, fifteen-minute episodes that were continued from one to the next, which was a really interesting choice on their part. But um, uh, Jason of Star Command is not as good as Space Academy as Space Academy, if you ask me, but. It has the villain. It has Dragos in it, which is uh, the the one thing that I remember most vividly about Jason of Star Command. But we'll see. We'll watch the first two episodes of Jason of Star Command. We'll see the introduction of Dragos, um, and we'll have great fun with that. Um, two big stars in Jason of Star Command as well. Um, excuse me. Uh, two big stars in Space Academy and Jason of Star Command. Mm -hmm. um, Space Academy. The uh, the the uh, headmaster of the Space Academy is uh, uh, John Jonathan um, <laughs> darn Harris. It. Jonathan Harris, uh, famously from uh, the the screaming Doctor Smith from uh, Lost in Space, um, but strangely lucid in <laughs> in, uh, mm -hmm. in Space Academy and responsible, right? Very lucid, responsible. lucid and responsible. A good uh, uh, a good authority figure, a good father figure. 
Um, he bef- probably adored it. He probably adored. He it. probably had a great like, time. He could yeah. play that leading man. Yeah. That he felt that he could have been. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And and he looked and acted like an adult. Um, yeah. Uh, we've got eight people watching uh, on stream now. Welcome everybody. Please say hello. Uh, before we get on with it, uh, please take a look at the uh, the chat there in, in the Twitch. There's a link where you can make donations. Let me show you real quick the. Uh, the money situation here at 50th Street Studio. 50th Street Studio is a nonprofit. Uh, we rely on donations from viewers to keep going month to month. These are our basic monthly expenses. Not much, but we do need to raise uh, raise the money. Uh, Iceman is here. Hello, Iceman. <clears throat> Iceman, hi. Um, uh, these these are our uh, basic expenses for uh, internet software and uh, monthly rent where we are. We are actually three months behind on rent, so we've got uh, $1,200 to raise. Uh, any amount that you can donate, please do so. There's a If you want to make a, a direct donation through PayPal, there's a PayPal uh, address on screen there. And the PayPal address uh, is on screen uh, with uh, myself and Mike here. Um, but let's, uh, let's get on with it. We have our weekly stories to catch up on, our weekly soap operas. Uh, <laughs> when we were kids, we, 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 we used to shun soaps until we realized that all of the shows that we watched were episodic. <laughs> we thought, wait a minute, Bionic yeah. Man does this, Six Million Dollar Woman does, does this. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's go into the TV room and see what uh, Charge Man Ken is up to, first of all. Terror Mental Hospital. Oh, God. Right off the bat. Yeah, these just get worse and worse. What a theremin. What the haunted car? What's going on? Okay, there's a guy with keys. We, we get it. The floor at the mental hospital polished to a mirror finish. Oh my god. Oh, wow. Oh. Huh? Huh? Tor Johnson. Oh, it's Ken. So this nine-year-old kid. What the what the hell is going on? Okay, the robot thinks it's funny. Couldn't they like be in different places? That robot's nuts. <laughs> Okay, this makes even less sense than anything I've ever seen on this. Yeah. Insert you? Like he's a suppository? He's going to investigate on the ground tonight. Yeah. So they just dump all the patients into one room. Yeah. And they, they, they put a, a 10-year-old kid in the room with the insane strong man. Who's clearly insane. On the floor. Who's clearly insane because he's wearing women's underwear. Yep. <laughs> so he just does the patients just have the run of the hospital? Is that? Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty much, yeah. Oh wow, and there's the, a, you know the rockets too. There's a giant the rocket, a rocket, <laughs> rocket launching facility under the middle hospital. <laughs> Half of Europe. Oh, they're after Europe now. What did Europe ever do? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Japan's like half of Europe, aka Germany. <laughs> we spent no expense. Doctor of air dues. Our target is Europe, just generally Europe. Not the UK, because that's not Europe. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Vaguely European rocket. Fire. Huh? <laughs> oh. Oh. 
I got to Phantom of the Paradise working the controls up there. Yeah. <laughs> Knees, guard, and everything. Yeah. So is is he kosher? Is that what that means? <laughs> you know, is, is the certification like on, ongoing? Go, go, Ken. Go, go, Ken. Oh, Joshua, I wouldn't call this a nice classic anime. <laughs> <laughs> it's very cynical. It's really cynical. Okay, how did his ship get underground with him? That's not good to have an explosion near a rocket. So, and, and to oh, have a... Where? To have an explosive firefight oh. near a nuclear missile under a, a, under a hospital... It stinks. <laughs> oh. No sound effect. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> I regret everything. Does my dream end here? <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa. He did it. He, he actually... Tell him. Wow. <laughs> He said he didn't get to vaporize him. And Charge Man just goes... <laughs> yeah. The power... Yeah. Wow. He's not at all bothered by that. Why, that... why would he be... <laughs> Oh, it's like oh, injector seats all around. That that is an awesome car. I I, yeah. I dig the car. Sweet voltage wagon, Dad. God. So we we just saw we just saw a character commit suicide on camera. Yep. Hi, Shenlong. Yes, it's Herc. Let's guess who the villain is going to be. It's going to be one of two. <laughs> you flip a coin. What if it's both? Hmm. A team up? A super villain team up? Yeah. I doubt it. From Castle, go with, uh, Castle, go with Daedalus. of young King Dorian issues an urgent summons, bringing to the scene the mighty Hercules. Da, 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 da. He awaits you in his court, Hercules. I just wonder if it, when this is the time of Herc's day, if he's gotten his reps in yet. What are you doing? Good call, Mike. Dorian's throne? Someone has to sit on it. Dorian, there we go. <laughs> have captured him. Why? Someone has like to sit on 50, it. 50. Stop. <laughs> the only way to free Dorian is to bring me the giant magnetic stone from the ruins bring of Rishu. some toilet paper. I, We're all out. The magnetic stone. Think of the powers I shall possess when you fetch it for me. With it, I can loot at will. I can loot at <laughs> will. <laughs> Poor Will. So this is Daedalus's fantasy. Oh yeah, cartoon selective magnetism. Wait, why would you want that treasure if it's attracted to a magnet? And, and why would you need it if you're the king of Caladon? And dead. As we established in episode one, that all you need to be king of Caladon is to sit on the throne. Yep. I'm king of this house every day. <laughs> <laughs> and what if I refuse to bring you the stone, Daedalus? Then you will <laughs> never see Dorian again. You win, Daedalus. That was easy. It is yeah. a long journey to the ruins of Rhesus. A vast area stretching out as far as the eye can see. So there are Roman ruins already. Oh, Hi, Carissa. No, Never. We must find it, Newton, for King Dorian's sake. If the magnetism of that rock is that powerful, I think everyone would know exactly where it is. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's see? All the, uh, Listen to the that's all the wayward paper clips go. This the place, Herc? This the place? Yes, Newton. What's the magnetic stone we came for? Can you get it out, Herc? Can you get it out? Sounds like yes, somebody's Newton. running a wood chipper or something. Yeah. If he just wore it as an earring, he could have it on him at all times. Oh, that's got to go somewhere. And Newton's dead. Herco down to hole. <laughs> Shenlong is asking, why is he repeating the same lines? You're, you're asking questions that cannot be answered, Shenlong. Just accept it. He just does. He does. That's it. Now, come on. So, Hercules, you have kept you your hand? promise. <laughs> yes, Daedalus, the magnetic stone is yours. After you free King Dorian. <laughs> what? <laughs> Dorian! There's an elevator over there? My word, yeah. <laughs> Hercules. Very well, Daedalus. The stone is all yours. Weighs 3,000 pounds. And then an iron pot, yeah. Yep. Bonk. He sees it coming. <laughs> okay. <laughs> take it away. Take it away. I'll take you away, Daedalus. Wow. Oh, just we just took it. Took a hit. I feel like that. Now Daedal he's king. Daedalus has quite a throwing arm there. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay, wait a minute. Why wasn't the pot stuck to the rock already? It's gonna be so gross. Splat. Yeah, splat. Well, Newton, I've got my throne back. Thanks to Olaf! Why off camera again? With this Good idiot face. winking. Will be Cunningham. This this show has gotten lazy. This, this is those of you who who haven't been watching Hercules from the beginning. This show was actually kind of interesting. It's the laziest. We got nine people watching now. Welcome everybody. Say hello. And please donate. Bottomless pit. Bottomless pit. After guiding our friends from the Baron's cave, the condition it's of so Glowfish soothing. is very grave. If they can get him to the pit in time, his health would soon again be fine. The glowfish has spent too much time away from deep water. While he was lighting the Baron's cave for our escape and recovering the magic shellophone, the reduced pressure of the thin water made him collapse. How long do you think he <laughs> What a convoluted time? sentence that was. <laughs> there, it's a good, dear, good read, though. Yeah. And how quickly we can find our way back to the bottomless pit. Oof, we must hurry, Dan. Dan is like a, a saint to care this much about a fish. Yeah. Meanwhile, the the people on the boat upstairs are like, "What's this?" Are like, Sign "Dan, the the generator is running out of gas." The scout fish is marked trails <laughs> because it's so easy to get lost here, and there are many dangers all around. Hello, AJ the Andrew. Is just ahead. Come on, Doc. Hey. Hurry, Dan. Oh, I hope you're in time. Like Dan, what's going on down there? He said, "I'm talking to this fish doctor." <laughs> <laughs> There's a baron down oh, here. And, uh, yeah. That glowfish is spoiled. Smoking a cigarette. It's just unusual. Fish out of the cave. But we'll get our chance for revenge. Yeah, we'll Joshua. I thought that might have been you. Welcome to Twitch. Yet, but it'll be something sinister. Ooh, that's nice. Quiet now. <laughs> that's nice. You know, that's all right. Hmm. 
They're really heavy on the, the incidental music this time. Oh, good then. That's the entrance to the bottomless pit. Adagio the for dying fish. The fish three quarters of the way down. Lower him away. The pressure will restore him. I hope so. He saved our lives. The bottomless pit has a front door <laughs> with a with a sign. This way, this way to bottomless pit. Yeah. Abandon all hope, ye who enter. <laughs> but since you're in water, what what's the point of a bottomless pit? Nah, he's dead. Yeah, that's better. See them? As he goes down, you can see him breaking up. Oops. Off scaffold, Krieger. Why don't you watch where I'm going? But I don't know where we're going. You hear, boss? I have another diabolical idea. Oh, well, boss. The signpost. Quick, Trigger. Give me a film. We'll turn the signpost around. Then the diver will never find mm. his way back. <laughs> will I get lost, boy? That's diabolical, all right. Yeah, that's genius. <laughs> but to acknowledge that it's diabolical means that he understands Quite. right and wrong. Right. Help He's just push. a dick. How's the goldfish, Doc? Looks brighter already. <laughs> Very good sign, Dan. Like, uh, like Newton uh, did at the <laughs> end of that, that last Herc episode. He did this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now we must get back to Miss Minerva. The others will be right. Right. Uh, just a minute, Doc. He's like the Mr. My Mushnik of fish. Well, what, what do you mean? My ship is signaling It's me. a message from the captain of my ship on the surface. Just come Attention, punch out. A diver Dan, calling Diver Dan. Do you hear me? Yes, Wait, Captain. Why is it? Is that his full name? Are you all right? <laughs> I, Fine, I guess. <laughs> diver Your time T Dan. Is up. <laughs> You'll have to come back. Terrible to the parents. Ship. May I have a few minutes more, Captain? There's another area I want to explore. Very well, Dan, but don't take too long, and be careful. You're in a dangerous area. Very good, sir. Come on, Doc. I'm anxious to meet Miss Minerva. And okay, I want the backstory of the captain right. knowing what yeah. is well, happening there. underwater, like he's been there before. Yeah. So he's like, I ah, go. <laughs> Hello, Ryan on YouTube. Welcome. Uh oh, is this now, stupid now, diabolical bigger. plot actually going to work? <laughs> Not boss Baron Trigger. Okay, Baron Trigger. <laughs> Quiet, you fool. Here they come. Be careful, there. Ah, there's the signpost. Even the f intelligent fish doctor cool. falls for oh, this. Yes, we go this way. <laughs> we must be careful not to go near the teetering rock. It's very treacherous. He's going to go near the teetering rock. It's very, spoiler. Time, I hope it's not it, it's very treacherous and very teetering. It must be right up ahead. Let's go back the way we just came from. Yeah, that was a great idea, boy. <laughs> <laughs> it's working like a charm. It won't be long now. Minerva's throne is right up ahead. The signs tell Dan and Doc. But Baron's switch leads them instead to perilous teetering rock. It's already teetering. Look at it. He moves among creatures of frightening features. Flashing, he's flashing, jaws flapping. Is this a daily or weekly show? I, I don't know. It was syndicated, so I imagine local TV station would show it however they liked. Hawaii 1.0. All right. 
Now for some Rocky and Bullwinkle. Ready, Rock? You sure you know how to work that thing? Ivory's here. No. Yeah, hi, Anyways, Ivory. here's what it was supposed hi, to look like. Well, our heroes are all at sea, for Boris Badenov has tricked them into a leaky lifeboat, cut the cables, and watched them drift away in the fog. Little does he know that the boys have taken the priceless mooseberry bush with them, disguised as an old gentleman named Uncle Chumley. Hey, Bullwinkle, this <laughs> boat is leaking. You know I got the same sneaky feeling? We gotta find something to plug up the hole. Like Chumley the walrus? Yeah, but what about that one? You might lend a hand, Uncle Chumley, instead of just sitting there. Bullwinkle, I got an idea. What is it? Stand on your head. Is that your oh. idea of an idea? <laughs> Quick, we can use your uh. hand versus plugs. Sure enough, as fate would have it, when Bullwinkle stood on his head, the points of his antlers just fit the holes in the yeah. bottom of the boat. It's working, Bullwinkle. You stopped the leak. Show us what you can do if you just use your head. Now all we have to do is wait for the SS Andalusia to find us. I hope they hustle it up. My brains are getting soggy. Don't worry, they'll pick us up in a couple of minutes. Rocky wouldn't have been so confident if he knew more about the Andalusia, for she was under the command of Captain Peter Peachfuzz, the world's worst sailor. <laughs> Even as a youth, Peter Peachfuzz had wanted to be a captain, but something always went wrong. Whoops. At 18, Peter joined the Navy, where due to his sailing through the Panama Canal in the wrong direction, he wound up in he command the of the only icebreaker in the South Sea. Toys. Half ahead, port! Stand by to jettison the supercargo! Get a canoe and Tyler, too! On the double! His seamanship <laughs> won him scores of medals, all donated by the enemy. And a nickname was bestowed on him by his grateful shipmates, Wrong Way Peach Fuzz. After his military service, he assumed command of a smaller vessel plying the coastal waters. <laughs> Then one day, a maiden aunt died and left him a hundred million dollars. Oh, my God. Of course, Peter's first act wow. was to buy the SS Andalusia and hire himself as captain. His second act was to run right into the Brooklyn Bridge. Hardest <laughs> thing! Block that kick! Next day, after he tried to sail the Andalusia <laughs> up 42nd Street to Times Square, his officers held a special meeting. He's a mutton-headed idiot. Couldn't command a boat in a bathtub. He's a bird brain. As a bird lover, I'll resent that. Yes, gentlemen, he is an incompetent nincompoop. He really has only one qualification. What's, What's that? that? He's the captain. But we gotta do something. And he's got a hundred million dollars. And yeah. so late that night, the officers watched as the ship's carpenter quietly disconnected the captain's steering wheel and telegraph. <laughs> of course, Peach Fuzz never noticed the change. Lay off! Hold that line! But the ship was actually run from another set of controls on a lower deck. Unfortunately, <laughs> while all the other officers were searching for our heroes, Captain Peach Fuzz made a wrong turn and wound up in the right room. Mm. There you go. The result was instant panic. The Andalusia spun around in circles and then started off at full speed in all directions at once. You hear that, Bullwinkle? Won't be long now. In all directions at once. Uh, hey, what? Here wow. Hokey smoke, Bullwinkle, get off! Like quantum mechanics. Right yeah, that's just what I was going to say. <laughs> and the tremendous bulk of the SS Andalusia swept past without even slowing down. Boy, that was too close for comfort. Yeah, if I ever catch the nitwit who's steering that boat, I... Nothing personal, <laughs> you understand? Look out, Bullwinkle! Here she comes again! This time she's really gonna run What about the boat. Bullwinkle's and sure antlers? Enough, the knife-like prow of the huge yeah. ocean liner struck the lifeboat squarely in the mm. middle. Don't miss our next episode, The Deep Six, or The Old Moose and the Sea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you, Carissa, for that $10 donation while we watched Rocky and Bullwinkle. <laughs> they, they still haven't... That's not the the Captain Peter Peach Fuzz voice that I remembered, so I guess they still haven't figured out Peter Peach Fuzz's voice. Um, when they introduced him a couple of episodes, he had a different voice even than the one today, if you, if you remember. So they're still working on that voice. Anyway, welcome, everybody. Our bad Saturday morning, and thank you, Carissa, for that $10 donation. Um, as, uh, as I was saying earlier, we do need the donations. We've got, uh, we've got a goal of a hundred dollars for the weekend. As always, uh, we're 10% there. Thanks to Carissa. There's a link in the Twitch chat where you can, uh, make a donation or you can use the, uh, I always get the wrong hand. You can use the, uh, direct, uh, donation, uh, PayPal address, uh, right there, uh, on camera. Uh, we're getting ready to watch Space Academy. Per special request from my co-host Mike, 
Uh, this is, let me show you the, the poster here. Uh, Space Academy uh, premiered on uh, Saturday morning uh, network television here in the States in the uh, fall of 1977, the same year that Star Wars came out, um, which means it predates Star Wars. Uh, it was influenced mostly by Star Trek and uh, Space 1999. The, the ship that you see on camera right there is actually cannibalized from a previous show that Filmation had made called Arc 2. And we watched a little bit of Arc 2 once here before. And um, uh, we, we watched a, a Space Academy mini marathon uh, on one of our earlier episodes. And Mike was so impressed that he, he wanted to see more. We'll also be watching a couple of episodes of Jason of Star Command, which was a spinoff of Space Academy, which, which uh, appeared the following year, 1978. Again, my co-host is Mike, a.k.a. Mr. Fox Guy. Um, I think everyone here knows, uh, about the Mr. Fox Guy channel. I, I think, uh, our viewership is 100%, uh, yeah, we sure crossover. <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah, saw yeah. most of these people, most of the people in chat I saw, uh, last night when I watched, when I co-hosted your, uh, your double feature last night, that, that wretched double feature, uh, uh well, at least, we at there. least the Beast of Gekka Flats made Catwoman of the Moon seem better by comparison not really <laughs> they, were, they were both pretty bad the, 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 yeah that's true. that's true the beast of yucca flats i could kind of see i could kind of see the the director's thought process i could kind of see what he was going mm -hmm. for even though it was mm -hmm. a total failure with yeah. cat women <laughs> from the moon i it was just a mystery it was just a it was just all over the place um yeah so so yeah, they had their they had their pros and cons, mostly cons. Um, <laughs> right. uh, what are you showing uh, this coming week, by the way? Uh, Wednesday, I have the uh, movie. It's called Hero of Rome. Okay. And on Friday, just to check my notes here, uh, Women of Devil's Island will be my uh, Friday night drive-in. That movie. sounds terrible. That sounds truly awful. Yep. Now, Hero of Rome <laughs> mm -hmm. has uh, the actor who was in Danger Death Ray. Okay. Uh, Danger <laughs> Death Ray I... probably has the <laughs> stupidest name of a hero ever. What was it? His name is Bart Fargo. <laughs> That's really his name, Bart Fargo. Do you want to say Fart Bargo, the... but it's Bart Fargo. <laughs> That's the character's and name? It's not the actor's name. The character's name, right? name is Bart Fargo. Bart. The actor's name uh, is escaping me right now, but... Yeah. Um, he had done a lot of film over in uh, Italy. He's one of those actors that couldn't quite latch onto in Hollywood. Mm. And Italy had a very thriving uh, uh, mm -hmm. cinema in the 60s right. and mm -hmm. 70s. Yeah. And uh, so he kind of latched on to, to that. But yeah, Danger Death Ray was featured on Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. That's where I saw mm -hmm. this actor for the first, first time. Mm -hmm. um, that one's so bad, but it's got a great theme. It's got great music to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got this like like imagine like a '60s uh, uh, like Austin Powers in like Flint okay. kind of thing going on. Okay. Uh, but the actor's name was Gordon Scott. Okay. That, that so, was his name. Wow, what an American-sounding name. Um, who is actually born in Portland, hmm. but he trying to thrive kind of the way. <clears throat> what's the guy? The guy who played um, the guy who played this the lead scientist in two two thousand one in the beginning, the one that was brought to the moon uh, the Hay actor Hay had haywood uh, floyd yeah the uh, actor who played haywood floyd uh whose name escapes me too um he uh had a better career over in the uk mm. than he did over <clears throat> in the united yeah. states but eventually yeah. he did come uh william Sil mm. william sylvester was his mm. name okay uh, so sometimes you'll have these american actors that have yeah. to go to other mm -hmm. countries and regions of the world to, to find uh, success, unlike Jackie Chan, where he's successful wherever he goes. Right, right. Okay. But yeah, so we got Hero of Rome, a sword and sandal movie. Okay. The usual fare. And uh, the Women of Devil's Island. Okay. You had to check your notes again there. Okay, yeah, I want to make sure I got that right. Yeah, the, really? The, Women of Devil's Island? Yeah. yeah. Yep. The uh, donation link came up in the Twitch chat there. You, you can donate. You can also look at our merchandise store and the uh, PayPal 
uh, PayPal address where you can donate directly is on screen here. Um, Ivory says, you gentlemen, uh, gentlemen, who came in? <laughs> are, are better like uh, my cat got in the room with yeah, me so <laughs> are better at bad movie trivia than i am that might not be <laughs> such a good thing she says right, um right okay uh the the donation link came up in the twitch chat and also the, the uh, donation address is on screen we do need your donations speaking of which um just this uh just two days ago um i uh i became a, a moderator at a long dead uh, subreddit on uh, reddit.com called Saturday morning. That's, that's the name of it. Just one, one word Saturday morning. So those of you who know anything about Reddit, go look that up and I'm going to start posting. Um, I'm going to start posting links to uh, retro uh, children's programming there. I've already started posting, um, posting stuff started last night. I'm going to start redesigning the thing. And I'll be posting uh, uh, links to uh, all the shows uh, that we do here. Um, uh, Carissa says, "Wow, I don't know if it's a wow moment, but because <laughs> there was oh, wow, there there was the the thing the the subreddit had been dead for three years. They didn't have a moderator. You can apply for to be a moderator on a dead subreddit. So I did." It's alive. Um, it's yeah. alive. <laughs> Ivory, thank you for the ten dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Carissa says yay question mark. So yeah, that's the that's the correct response. That that's a more appropriate response. Carissa's dropping interjections interjections from Schoolhouse Rock. <laughs> wow. Hey. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> that's the end. I okay. mean it's usually set apart from a sentence by an exclamation point or by a comma when the feeling's not as strong. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start getting ready for uh, uh, to show us uh, Space Academy here. Let me open the folder. Again, this is, uh, this is a series by Filmation from uh, 1977. Filmation is notorious for making some of the worst television shows ever made, some of the worst cartoons ever made, but... This is one of their gems, one of their long-lost gems, and I consider it a lost Star Trek series. Let's give it a watch. And aren't Phil Filmation known for, you don't even have to see it, you can close your eyes, you can, and you know. To yeah, most magnificent right. Achievement in the conquest of space. Because you hear the Lou, and you hear Lou Scheimer, and you know, yep. Mm -hmm. Found it in the star year 3732. What a great theme. Yeah. Look at that great set. I know, it's awesome. Here we have gathered young people from the farthest reaches of all the known worlds. They have been chosen for their unique abilities and are being trained to cope with the mysterious, the unknown, the unpredictable dangers lurking in the vast darkness of space. Great looking special effects too. We are now orbiting the planet Sira, beyond the Sagittarius constellation. And this is our newest visitor, the comet Janus. It is, as you can see, a double nucleared comet system, and it takes its name from the Roman god Janus, who had two faces, and who taught mankind many things, according to legend. That's actually kind of interesting. Mathematics mm -hmm. and agriculture. It's interesting to note. Stand by. Stand by. Yellow light alert. Yellow light alert. There he is. Comet Janus is changing course. Okay, so the Space Academy itself travels through space. I would have assumed that it was just in a neutral position since it's an it's an asteroid. Oh, it's fucking man, wow. Yeah. Rendezvous, 30 seconds. Yes, Orico, sir. he says. Orico. We need to start saying, look at that great set. Look how great that looks. Loki, go get people. And Tigar too. Did they ever reuse these sets for anything? I don't know. Loki, move it. That goes for all of us. Ivory says, uh, 
Ivory says, how have I never heard of this? This has been entirely forgotten. Ivory also says, I will join you on the subreddit as Mary Norwood. Is that your secret identity? <laughs> the Comet Janus is on a collision course with the Academy. Impact in approximately 10 hours. That will give you time to reach it, land, and you will have only two hours to evaluate. On Janus? But isn't a comet just a ball of space dust? Not exactly, Adrian. The nuclei of comets sometimes varies and includes solid mass as well as inertial energy. What are you saying is... Someone studies. It's a hunk of rock. What Paul is saying is that what wow. we have is a double nucleate comet system. So it's two hunks of rock. That's close enough, Loki. <laughs> now then, I want you to take samples and run carbon tests if possible. Those functions are yours, Adrian, and yours, Paul. Teagard will remain here with me in control, so will Loki. Chris, I've ordered tech knife charges put aboard the Seeker. You and Laura will place them to act as deflective blasts and then get away with alacrity, understood? Yes, sir. Any questions? They can't go on this mission without me. I'm indispensable. What? Indispensable! <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm sure it'll be very difficult, Loki, but they'll do their best to get along without you. But they need me. I need you, Loki. Remember, Chris, if those comets aren't deflected and we should be hit, the Academy could be severely damaged, even destroyed. Now, on your way, and good luck. Yes, sir. This is all very lucid so far. All very straightforward. Yeah. Responsible decision-making. I keep forgetting mm -hmm. that that guy right there, the one who plays, the one played by, the one who was playing Tigar, was in Revenge of the Nerds. Oh, <laughs> right, right. Yeah, he was, uh, he was Takashi. <laughs> okay. Joshua says they, they remind me of the crew from Alien. How so? I, I don't... <laughs> I don't get that at all. Look at the, the great-looking interior of this... Oh, she has a chemistry set right there in the shuttle. But look how great the interior of the shuttle is. Look how great this looks! Look how amazing this all looks! The great uniforms, everything. Thank you, Karen. Here we go. Comfortable chairs, too. This is great uh, uh, engine blast off effect. And, and the, the harsh uh, space lighting. Great. Mm -hmm. it looks great. Was this only on for like two for years? Is that what you were I think it was only one season. I think Which it was just really? one. Yeah. The closest one. We should make it in about 30 minutes at cruise speed. If the two planetoids maintain their position. Well, why wouldn't they? The instrument indicates the farthest planetoid is accelerating. Hmm. Of course, the actress playing Laura, you may recognize her voice as Fern you. from Charlotte's Web. Nothing like mm -hmm. the proper scientific terminology. The closer planet seems to be slowing down. Are you sure, people? Affirmative. The farthest planetoid is gaining momentum. It will intercept three hours, 11 minutes. It's an hour after we get there. Okay, people. Let me know if anything changes. Oracle. Order received and carried out. Igneous. Like every other planetary sample. Probably indicates a common origin of the solar system. Next free period, I'd like to learn more about that, Adrian. I didn't know you were interested in geology, Chris. Maybe because he has yeah, such Chris. an interesting teacher. All people are interesting. Laura is very interesting. I love you, Laura. Right here, in front of everybody? <laughs> I pay them no mind, people. I love you, too. Pamela Bartish! Acceleration on the second planet. What was that all about? <laughs> gravitational pull. Perhaps something else. For whatever reason, you will not have much time on Janus 1. Right, sir. People computes will only have an hour. Be careful, Chris. Control out. Actually, I think Peepo you know, was really smart in diffusing Chris's creeping on, on that other girl. Either yeah. Way, we'll soon find out. Touchdown in 41 seconds. Mm 
And the cameraman's dead. See, this is Star Trek. Look at those colorations. Yeah. Testing atmosphere. Life support tests. People? Affirmative and positive. All readouts normal. No life support necessary. Okay. People, that's impossible. Of course it's impossible. But it's true. Microphone, boom mic in the shot. I just, just saw the the boom mic. No, it's just it's, it's space material. Yeah, it's it's yeah. everywhere. Uh, and it's no like atmosphere. Uh oh. Stemming from an artery. They cover everything. But Chris just told people that that's impossible. I like the I appreciate the fact that they acknowledged that that what is it? that they shouldn't I need that they shouldn't have an atmosphere out there. Gotta get a sample of this to take back. Uh oh. That's more of a, Chris, what a sample. Yeah. Wow. It's alive. Bleeding. It's bleeding, she well, said. Put it back on and put a band aid on it. That? What did you see, people? I didn't see. I heard something. A cry. A sound of pain. We didn't hear anything. Nevertheless, I did. Mm hmm. Oh. Look at that rock. Planet's alive. Chris, this whole planetoid. It's alive. They're going to cut to commercial. <laughs> she's she's using a napkin. <laughs> she's got a paper towel. Not yet. I want to be sure what we found here first. We are sure. This planetoid is an alien life form. Alive but sick. What did she just chip then off? Like, help it survive. Yeah. external genitalia or but something? How is I mean, it isn't one of your run of the mill, everyday cold in the heads. Listen, Chris, I think we should check in first. You know, if you wait much <laughs> What's that face he was making? It's been a really <laughs> long time making sure that we understand. We came here to he work things out under our own responsibility. People, how long do we have? 84 minutes to collision with the Academy, 58 before rendezvous with Janus 2. People, you said rendezvous? Janus 2 has slowed its approach. Coming in. And it's alive, too. The way it accelerated must mean it's in better shape than Janus 1. Maybe it was... It's defending it. Was it. To, uh, I, I really appreciate the way these kids are catching on. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're not spending the whole episode bumbling and not figuring out what's going on. They're not relying on an adult what? to tell right. them what to do. Is this planetoid intelligent? Of course. Otherwise, how could I communicate with it? You oh, were talking people to it? Talking oh. to it. Its name is Ergo, and it uses magnetic pulsing for communicating. Much more efficient than vocal sounds. Hey, people. Do you think you could uh, help us communicate with Ergo? Anything for you, Laura. <laughs> There we go. Pay off. The frequency so that you can hear Ergo speak. It's gonna be Lou Scheimer. Ready? I am Ergo. I forgive. Called it. Yep. You forgive us for what? For chopping off pieces of me. Oh, Ergo, we're sorry. We didn't know you were alive. That's why I forgive you, Adrian. You know my name. People told me. He also told me why you are here. You are going to blow me into pieces. That's not true. We're using small charges to change your course so you don't run into our space academy. But I am weak. You will still hurt me. We don't want to do that. You can help us by changing your present course. They're talking to there a rock. Much time. My but I, told I like it. There were intelligent life forms in this galaxy, and I used the last of my free energy to come here. You mean you can't change your course? No, I can't. I am sorry, but it is too late. I am very sick. Very sick. If I could be energized... We'll help you, if we can. Our ship is very powerful. Yeah. My sensors detected radiant energy sources. But this would only destroy me. My life energy is a form of magnetic flux. I cannot convert any other form of power. Heavy shattering we're going on right now. I can hmm. be no more. If only Hercules with his magnetic rock would show up. Will <laughs> at last. I am getting weak. 
but I must warn you about Targ. Who is Targ? The other planetoid, Janus 2, is oh. Targ. They're not friends. What happened to Ergo? I am losing contact. It's getting weaker. People, can you run an electroanalysis of Ergo? Affirmative. An electroanalysis. What does that mean? There is an alternating uh, pattern. Level Sign 1 diagnostic? Yeah. 1, 000, uh, if we could match that frequency, disc. we could feed Ergo all the energy he needs. An electronic transfusion. Let's go. <laughs> oh, you stay here. If his... If the energy he needs is electromagnetic energy, then why does he have um, arteries? Why does he have uh, blood? Yeah, isn't there ambient like energy in the universe that you can just like? Yeah, I guess. Well, we're second guessing the geniuses who wrote this. So. Oh, we should not do that. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it be inside? Drill a hole right here. We'll implant it right here. That tickles. <laughs> yeah, he's ow, ow, ow. There it is. Yeah. Frequency 27,500. Chris, look. It's Targ. Oh, it's so frightening. Coming in. Well, if looks count for anything, I'd hate to be alone with that thing. Do not interfere. This is Another one. Targ. As soon as Paul's ready. Do not interfere. This is Targ. <laughs> he introduced yeah. himself. Stand by, Laura. So is is this a, a so is Ergo a, a space cop or something? Oh. Where's people's face? The LEDs in his face went out. We're ready now. Sound you can listen to all day. Yeah. Oh. Turn on your heart line. Do not interfere. Oh. Nice. War of the world sound. Yeah. Whoops! Cut the string. There you go. Oh! Oh! Thank you for trying, my friends. Was what I wanted to warn you about is Tar. He is a criminal. Yeah. He is out to the space criminal. Anyone, anything, including your space. He's a, a space nihilist. <laughs> He's smaller though. Yeah. Doing that to yourself. Oh, oh yikes! There she goes. It's Tar. He's taking the ship. And Lars. Wow, on that's bad. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Fire phasers, break shields. I'll be in my ready room. Oh, so these asteroids are really tiny. Look at this. Chris and Laura are twins. We must they they Ergo. know what each other's thinking. I oh, okay, that's right. Help you. I am not energized enough to fight Tar. Oh, come on, we care. Have the energy from your ship. I must escape him now. Find a new energy source somewhere. Please, Ergo. Use your energy against Targ. Help us free Laura. You don't understand. I have very little energy left. If I use it against Targ, it could mean my life. Please, Ergo. If you don't use it, it'll mean Laura's. You are right. I 
will climb. <laughs> a rock is better than a person. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay, he arrives in our galaxy and immediately dies, saving some kid. <laughs> There's Peepo's face. Pay it forward. Whoa! Spinning donuts. Fire phasers? Our spin laser will Proton torpedoes? Oh, wow. She does open fire. Misses completely. She called it a spin laser. Huh. So it shoots like like a like a laser bolo, an exploding laser bolo. Uh, I'm I'm out of here. Bye. Yeah. He's running for it. <laughs> People just goes. Hey. Ergo, did you see that? Ergo, it's hurt badly. I'm well, Ergo's I'm dead. Hurt. Yep. Everybody Adrian? pray. Ergo's in shock. Needs energy to survive. If we can get him back to the academy, we might be able to treat it. If we can get him back to the academy, that was the problem. He was headed for the academy. Don't no worry, Ergo. Helps on the So way. are they done with Targ? Yeah, Targ's gonna go out of the burbs. Chris? Laura. Are you alright? Yeah. <laughs> Is the transmitter still locked on? Mm-hmm. It's no use, Chris. Chris has got Receiver's a Paul a Matt kind I of thing going on. Great people. Laura, Welcome to Peepo, Barbie member Right away. Yeah, let's melt Peepo. Yeah. That I would do that. I would totally do that Peepo, in this situation. <laughs> I mean, I think Peepo came from what? Like Radio Shack? I'm sure there's yeah. like extra part. Well, you know. It's actually not a bad looking robot. No. And again, this was before R2-D2. Is he gonna use his little claw hands as transmitters? Is yep. that what he's doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grabby. Thank you. I will be all right now. Really? Yeah. That, that was it. Oh, too bad I'm completely radioactive and you're all gonna die of cancer. Yeah. Bye bye. Teamwork wins again. I guess I better report into control. Uh, this I want to hear. This I want to see. <laughs> Sager to Academy Control. Come in. Hey, Chris, long time no hear or see. Uh, uh, how'd it go? Everything went according to plan, Tigar. Just one thing. We're bringing home a patient for you. Who's hurt? Janice. Would you please repeat Hell you that doing? statement, Captain Gentry? Well, Commander, I think I'd rather have you see it for yourself. Take a look outside. Help bells. Now I've seen Not a, not a problem. It's still headed toward the Space Academy though, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> and destruction. Ba, 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 Is that the ba. correct pronunciation, Janice? Um. Uh, well, that's a modern English pronunciation. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure in Roman times, well, there's no letter J in. Yeah. Latin language. I have a deep, deep cut trivia about Janice. Really? B. Yes. Um. Janice Films yeah. is basically like the film restoration group mm -hmm, right. that was co-founded by Bryant Halliday, mm -hmm. uh, an actor, British actor uh, known for, uh, what's that, uh, uh, the, the movie where he's like the magician and there's like a dummy and also the amazing, some like science fiction. He basically made a bunch of bad movies. Okay. But... Um, he made enough money that he founded Janus Films okay. that is basically like the Criterion Collection mm -hmm. now. Yeah, so I understand. He, he, yeah, so he, he was kind of uh, instrumental in preserving films from like the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and so mm -hmm. on. So if it weren't for his failed movie career pushing him into a different direction, 
we wouldn't have a lot of these movies that are completely restored and also brought over to the United States like a lot of the Akira Kurosawa films. Okay. So. All right. Yeah, Brian Brian Halliday, not a very good, not least the choices of, of films, but mm-hmm. in fact, I think two of his films were featured on Mystery Science Theater. Okay. Um, I can't remember what th- there's one about where they could like transfer stuff using light, and uh, <laughs> there's one about like it's like it's Devil Doll, Devil uh, Doll is Devil the name Doll. of the movie. Okay, with William Sylvester in it. Oh, it all comes full circle. Mm. Um, <laughs> so if you get a chance, watch watch that. I may actually <laughs> show that on my channel at some point. Okay, I do have a restored version of it on DVD. Okay. So. But let's get home with more Space Academy. Yeah, he will see more Space Academy. Speaking of which, <laughs> um, Ivory wants you to spell his name. She wants to look this guy up. Um, uh, type Brian it in. Halliday? Type it in the him? chat. Yeah, for, I can do that. Yeah, I can um, even give you the link to uh, yeah, his IMDb. Okay. I have a story of, about Space Academy. The guy who did the special effects, who designed the special effects for Space Academy, which looks, which look amazing. Um. And they they and they're unique. They don't look like any other show, really. They're obviously mm-hmm. influenced by Star Trek and Space 1999, but they look unique. Um, the on the uh, on the DVD, you can get the the complete series on DVD. But there's an interview with the guy who did the special effects, and he said that he was a college dropout, uh, a young college dropout in his early 20s at the time, and he got the job by lying about his resume. He had no experience with special effects at all. But he was applying for every job, any job he could find in the Los Angeles area, and this one came available. And so he just lied. He said, "Yeah, I do special effects." And he, he, the way he put it was, he figured that it would take them three months or so to figure out that he didn't know what he was doing. And in three months, he <laughs> he, he would have had his his uh, apartment paid for, his temporary lodging paid for for the summer. Uh, but then he ended up just making things up as he went along and, and doing these amazing special effects <laughs> and and kickstarting his own career in special effects because of this. Um, I, I don't know if he was in charge of special effects or if he was just... Uh, I, I don't recall what his actual position was, but he lied about doing special effects and then invented wow. just invented stuff as he was going along. Yeah. I mean, but have those of you who are seeing this for the first time, have you ever seen anything that looks quite like this? I mean, obviously it looks, it has a Star Trek look to it, but it's, it's unique. It has, they have unique uniforms, uh, uh, unique, uh, unique space headquarters, unique uh, space shuttle, a unique robot. They uh, definitely show that they, they actually cared. There was a lot yeah. of pre-production. Yeah. You know, let's figure stuff out. Let's figure out the world. Let's figure out yeah. the hierarchy, who's in charge. Yeah. And not let these just kids, like, just, just like you were saying, stumble their way through through things. They had yeah. good training, and it yeah. showed. Yeah. All right, let's get on with uh, the next episode. Welcome to man's most magnificent achievement in the conquest of space. The man-made planetoid, Space Academy. Founded and again, I have to say... 37, 32. Jonathan Harris Jonathan Harris works really well in this role. Mm-hmm. Here we have gathered young people from the farthest reaches of all the known worlds. They have been chosen for their unique abilities and are being trained to cope with the mysterious, the unknown, the unpredictable dangers lurking in the vast darkness of space. In the vast darkness of space. Let me uh, do some adjustment here on the on the screen. Chris, get a larger picture oh, here. Now, Oracle Commander. You're one degree off. That orders received and carried out. Well, is it that critical, Commander? Correct your course, Chris. That is an order. Oracle. Is that what that means? Uh, orders received and carried out. Yep. Mm. Or Oracle. Yeah. What is it? What happened? Report, please. Uh oh. There's something coming out of the triangle. Mass, 20 tons. No heat, no light. It's just space junk. Out of the triangle. Shut off those alarms. Commander, we're taking evasive action. No, Chris. 
Not into the triangle, I forbid it. Ten degrees, lateral quadrant. He's so in trouble when he gets yeah. back. Yeah. Feature. <laughs> Press Something's the wrong. Yeah, well, you said it. <laughs> Chris, what is that thing? It's a Xanadu galaxy. <laughs> we're drifting into the triangle. Seeker to Academy. Uh, you Commander were warned. Gampu, yes. Come in, Commander Gampu. Chris, it's no use. All power readouts are negative. We're going in. What a time to get acquainted with a hunk of rock. No use. Our engines are dead. Oh, terrific. It's interesting. Collision all they course. have are impact. Forty-one seconds. All they have are push-button controls. They, they don't have a, like a joystick or a steering yoke. Missing ships. This is the this is the incidental music from the uh, animated Star Trek series hmm. from uh, six years earlier. Filmation famously reusing everything. Whoa! Way to go! Wow. Yeah. Close. What was it? It looked like an old-fashioned laser beam. But where did it come from? Old-fashioned, old-fashioned laser beam. I guess it's like what? At least. Three thousand. Calm still out. <laughs> still no power. The thirty-second century. <laughs> yeah. What the? F <laughs> what? It's smoking. Believe that? Speaks the it's old like pig Latin. From an old horror movie. Go back at once. This is your final warning. But we can't Being go your back. first. Or forward either. Our engines are dead. Beware. Never return. Tell the rest of your kind. They must not enter the triangle. Ever. Don't meddle, kids. Well, I guess we've been told. <laughs> We've been served. Is it on now? <laughs> oh, he's pushing them out. Great. I don't think. Yep. Power Get off of my little triangle lawn. Come in, Seeker. Come in. We read your commander. Thank heaven. What happened? You disappeared from our screens. Was something in the triangle lost power? Commander, you won't believe what just happened. We were about to hit a rock as big as the academy. Don't when tattle. Out of nowhere came up. I know saved by a strange old-fashioned energy beam well how do you know that commander your boundary marker mission is scrubbed return to the uh oh camp who has some history i don't get it something's wrong how did That's you know something that from commander? space high school <laughs> i know because it happened before Yeah, only 15 Attention episodes. That's just so wrong. Yeah. It's like Firefly before there was Fire Firefly. Mm -hmm. Whoa, whoa. Loki, how many times have I told you about running? Yeah. You know, as... East makes lumps. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> we are here on the edge of this area, commonly known as the Alderaan Triangle. Many what? Strange things have happened. Do you see Alderaan? Alderaan? Wow. Yeah. Others have been saved by... by something? In my opinion, that something is Captain Rampo and his big, 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 big ghost ship. He's hooked on spooks. There never was a Captain Rampo. You're quite mistaken, Loki. The Captain Rampo legend was based upon truth. But it occurred more than a millennium Like General Wound or something? That was over a thousand years ago. <laughs> Why Rampo and his ship would have to be ghosts. People. It's like some kind of space flying Dutchman tapes. thing. What else have you found? Yeah. Captain Rambo was in command of a starship, the Hope, an almost exact duplicate of the Academy, built on a planetoid. I remember that from history class. An almost exact duplicate planetoid. of Equipped with the Space Academy. Okay. You're mm -hmm. right. Just like the beam that blasted the rock before it could hit us. And like the energy force that pushed us out of the triangle. Yeah, but you don't think. I mean, Captain Rampo. Our mission here is to mark the boundaries of this area with space beacons. Okay, if, if it's a, an exact duplica of Space Academy, then star courses. We can try um, I anticipate a, a, I'm taking the academy in now. 
a money saving like re rain, a, a money saving reuse of the space academy model mm -hmm. like you'll have evil students and the evil robot evil. yeah i gave you the coordinates i had one quarter and like racism i had full speed and they have all targets but the bad guys have all the walmarts he did say Alderaan Triangle, didn't he? Yep, yeah, he did. I don't understand it, Commander. Even the reserve energy banks are draining. Reverse, full. They all play country music at the evil one, where we got <laughs> disco here. <laughs> right. It's the same thing that Just happened evil, to the seeker. Man. Power's out. We're drifting into the Alderaan Triangle. I don't like this. And they said it again. Mm -hmm. Just in case you missed it. Yep, there it is. Like the Academy. That must be Captain Rambo's vessel. Ghost ship. They yes. still have lawn darts. They're so evil. <laughs> the ghost ship. Well, they're more green. It's not an exact Mine. duplicate. It, it looks like it's. Wait, is it upside down? Is that what? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Kid mines are blown right now. Back yeah. in But they're just emergency power regenerators. So here we are. Yes, but where are we? Second vector of quadrant nine. Why can't you just say we're in the middle of the Alderan Triangle like the rest of us? But we're not. We're drifting just inside the lateral perimeter of one section of it. And my scanners indicate a positive live reading from that starship. That cannot be. Look, I see something. It cannot be. Ever. There may be an answer to all of this. Answer the Aldrin Triangle. Aboard that starship. Possibly. But without power, how do we get across to it? We've got a recycler aboard the Seeker. Commander, request permission to go aboard that starship. There may be something alive there. I'll bet it's Captain Rampo. The Flying Dutchman of outer space himself. Uh, flying Dutchman, yep. Chris, <laughs> yep. you and nice Paul jury rigged that recycler. I'll take the Seeker myself. Not alone. Volunteers? Me. Hey. Me too. Okay, a, a space haunted house? Yeah, all the kids want to go. Climb aboard, kids. The Great Space Coaster. <laughs> are all of them jammed into the... Yeah, there they are. <laughs> there. That space lock's part way open. We can make it in there. Paul, bring the hand laser. We may need it. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, that helps you, Doc. Never mind. Let's go <laughs> and stay together. Just uh, put a disc disco ball right there. Right there. Right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh oh. Almost like the academy. Well, sure wouldn't pass oh, there's well, there are spiders here. We know that. Space spiders. <laughs> yeah. Wait, if it's a space spider, is it like the spider for the oh. last night? Oh, this is your last warning. The master of this ship commands you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Who is your master? Oh, nice. Whoever it is, certainly wants to scare us away. Well, he's doing a great Free job. Free robe. Yeah, let's keep moving. <laughs> we better find out. <laughs> he wants to scare us away first. with with bed sheets and strings. <laughs> you want to scare him away? Bring out your dirty laundry. Ooh. It's very industrious also, spiders. Too much candy isn't good for your teeth. Yeah, but it's great when I get nervous. And I'm getting nervous. And m m m me what? too. Well, why was that included? What? Hey, something touched me. It's with us. Did somebody clap? It's here. Hey, my lollipop's gone. Who took it? Come on, give it back. 
I like their watches. Those are kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. Ghost of Captain Rampo. Like smart watches before we even thought about it. Where are you? Show yourself. There's something behind that door. Never say that. Because they never do. Paul, T guy, give me a hand. It's a, it's a, it's a pull. You have to yeah. pull it. Stand back. Pull, pull the, yeah. Use the hand laser. Use the hand laser. Well, I'm glad they're using the laser and not, not expecting T Gar to, to karate kick his way through the door. Said that before. I warned you for the last time. God gun it, I put on the wrong tape. Anyway, would you would you please just go oh, away is, now when is it you by can. leprechauns? Not until gonna, you answer some questions. Say, is that Billy Barty? Did he say <laughs> dog gun it? An ancient expression of exasperation. Well, we know that, but who said it? Yeah. Captain Rambo! Captain Rambo! My close captioning capitalized the name Billy Barty. It actually recognized the name Billy Barty. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> You're like in 300 movies or something. Sergeant Pepper. Oh, please, you make me feel so old. Oh, it's a... Uh, um... Captain Rampo, I presume? The same. Young boy, oh, come here, lad. I wish to thank you for your lollipop. Delicious. Oh. You're welcome. Uh. I guess. He yeah, has his cooties. I guess, yeah. Fair exchange? <gasps> a diamond! Here, look! That stone must be priceless. <laughs> so is my <laughs> Oh, speaking of that, it's just glass. <gasps> Captain Rampo, oh, he you has look, so many I'll questions. take a new one. Yeah. Hey, you have it. Come in, come in. I, I have shielded this room. We'll be safe here. Now come in, come in. Oh, and, and do me the honor of making yourselves at home. Be comfortable. Sit, won't you? Come, come, children. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, Captain Rambo. I, oh, it's a nice, comfortable couch. That thing out there. Wow, and a hammock. Uh, yeah, a hammock. Wow, nice. Wish I had one of those. Blind, mindless, living energy that seeks out other power sources to feed upon. You see, here in the triangle, we have no sun. Is that who I think it is? I can't think of his These name. Have Howard Morris. Them, yeah. Destroyed them. I just looked, looked it up. Drained them of all energy, even as they have drained your ships. That's why you tried to frighten us. He was us. in high anxiety. Save us. Mm -hmm. Aye, but I have failed again. Captain Rampo, you will oblige me by explaining. It's simple enough. <laughs> we had established a colony here on Lyra 3. This... Spaceship was in orbit about that planet. I, I was on board the ship alone. All the passengers had landed. When something happened to the sun, it flared enormously. And my starship was caught up in the magnetic storms that followed and hurled about. I tried to get back to Lyra 3, but I made the mistake of crossing the Alderan Triangle. And a massive yeah, energy force attacked my starship. Now, I knew that if I returned, this massive energy vapor would return with me. So, I have devoted my life to orbiting this triangle, warning or frightening off others so that no harm would come to them. Finally, a close-up of him. I was waiting for a close-up. Mm -hmm. You've done an heroic thing. But why have you lived so long? 
the radiant energy in the solar flare changed. He's also known for doing the voice of the Just gopher like from the Winnie the Pooh Disney yes. cartoons. Mm -hmm. And all these yeah. and, and the voice of little lisp. Right, and the voice of Jughead on the, mm -hmm. the, yep. the Archies. The yeah, Archies. So at this point, he had a long history with filmation. Then, and my shields mm -hmm. cannot hold much longer. When all of the power sources here in the triangle have been absorbed, the energy vapors will seek more power, and they will reach out and consume the entire galaxy. Oh, there must be galaxy! Wow. He also did the voice I of Mayor McCheese. <laughs> he directed some of the Mc McDonald Land commercials. No there. kidding. <laughs> yeah. This guy's got yes, some great trivia. Yeah. Did a lot of the, the, the Hanna-Barbera cartoons like from the 60s. But nothing to match the strength he of directed the TV pilot for Get Captain Smart. Hmm. Did you say that the vapor seeks out energy and feeds upon it? I insatiably. You saw how the demon vapors out there turned everything sort of greenish indeed i did perhaps we can give it a bit of uh, indigestion we've got to trap them while they're still here well then what are we waiting for Captain, love you can see their their the wheels in their heads yeah. spinning like well how do we yeah. do that Wait, I, I don't and they understand. already got a plan yeah. he taught them well but unfortunately it will mean the destruction of your ship i didn't really like it anyway it would be worth anything to destroy them. You know what must be done, Captain. Paul, you have a standby life support bracelet? He's yes, doing a really good Give job of playing a... a yes, doing a voice and a... Ah, thank you, matey. He's looking Over and sounding different than I've ever yes, seen him. Mm-hmm. I think while we were talking trivia, we missed a lot of... Uh, hey, oops. Wait, a, a, missed a lot of pseudoscience BS... <laughs> oh, oh, see the 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 energy creatures won't get us if we run real fast. <laughs> Chris, oh. There's vapors coming from the engine room. They're consuming the power cells. Tigar, uh, secure the hatch. She didn't waste any time panicking. No. Oh. Commander, the power cells are at minus three. Not enough for liftoff. Chris. You and Laura mind link. Try to reverse the smoke long enough for us to I meant to do some research, but I'm thinking Jonathan Harris, yeah, the same thing that Bob Denver us, did. Please. He just I went to tonight. work and yeah. had fun. Commander, yeah. Come on, Loki. Oh. Okay, they're doing some kind of <laughs> ESP nonsense here. Yeah. A little sunlamp action going. Gonna get a tan. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think where you're praying. Come on. Yeah, when you can't come up with a special effect, go. just run the film in reverse. That, that works every yep. time. Now, Chris, full radiant power in the forward laser. Now, see, that's a leader. He gets right in the pilot's yeah. chair. Like we're gonna, I'm gonna do this. Yeah. Get out of here with your. This is how you do it. Oh. Oh. Well, that was easy. The end of an like era. deer, deer hunter, one shot. Hey, me young bucko. <laughs> Did you ever hear about the Red Galaxy? The Red Galaxy. No. No. Ah, I must tell you about it. The Red Galaxy is a, it's a Roger full Corman of movie. Treasures and mysteries. <laughs> it's oh, a Roger know. Corman. Oh, it's got lollipop <laughs> trees. Let's go. Who's Roger Corman? He made bad movies two thousand years ago. And all of his progeny after that. Corman. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was fun. Really entertaining, yeah. I can't imagine I would have loved this. Maybe it just wasn't yeah. shown in the market. Where, 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 where I it lived. was on network television. Yeah, I don't. What was I don't. What was they doing? Seventy-seven. Uh, listening to Billy Joel. Uh, <laughs> getting ready for to see Star Wars again. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what we're gonna watch now? 
Um, by the way, we've got 11 people watching. Welcome, everybody. This is a bad Saturday morning, but we're having a great time this Saturday yes. morning. We're watching uh, Space Academy. We watched two episodes of Space Academy. And we're about to watch uh, two episodes of Jason of Star Command, which was a spinoff of Space Academy that came up a year later. Space Academy was only one season, which Mike was pointing out earlier is a, a crime, really. Uh, as I was thinking about it throughout that episode, it, it must have been too expensive. That must have been... That must have been yeah. the thing. The, these these Saturday morning shows, the networks had to pay for these shows. And if if the networks didn't have an immediate gigantic hit that 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 was immediately profitable, they wouldn't spring for another season. So it had yeah. to have been too expensive. And uh, you, you were always asking the question before, why would uh, – or I remember Captain Slinky always asking, why would there be – all these cartoons would have one, maybe two seasons, and then they would move on to something else. It was because the networks expected to have immediate uh, profit, um, to, to have something super famous immediately, and that almost never happened. Um, I, I'm sure the networks were always saying to these production companies, "Why can't just come up with something like Bugs Bunny? Why can't you do a Bugs Bunny thing? Why can't you do a Scooby-Doo? <laughs> right. Give us another Scooby-Doo. And right. so it had to be too expensive. So the next season they tried... They tried retooling all the Space Academy stuff for a show called Jason of Star Command, and you'll see uh, you'll see how it worked into the Space Academy universe. Um, I have vivid memories of Jason of Star Command. It was very different in tone from Space Academy, though, and that's probably mm. as I was just saying. It's probably because the networks were saying there's not enough action in Space Academy. It's, it's too uh, it's too cerebral. They were probably telling them. Um, but anyway, uh, we we need donations. We've got twenty dollars in donations so far today. Our goal is a hundred. Um, the uh, donation link is on screen right right below me here, and uh, there's a donation link in the Twitch chat that just came up. So please uh, please donate what you can. We're twenty dollars today, uh, and let's just get started with Jason of Star Command. It's an interesting show. Not as good as Space Academy, if you ask me, but we'll, we'll no. see. Danger hides in the stars. This is the world of Jason of Star Command. A space-age soldier of fortune determined to stop the most sinister force in the universe. Dragos, master of the cosmos. <laughs> Sid Haig. Sid Haig. <laughs> awesome. In his battle against evil is a talented team of experts. All working together in a secret section of Space Academy. A secret section of Space Jason Academy. Of Star Command. Mm -hmm. Chapter One: Attack of the Dragon Ship. It started off saying that he was a space age soldier of fortune. If he's a soldier of fortune, then is he a soldier of fortune, or is he with uh, Star Command? The time, the distant future. Man has reached the. It seems contradictory. Stars, but has also uncovered dark, mysterious galaxies. And the Star Command heads into the Could we the not fly to the sun? Danger Could we not fly into the wait. sun? Uh, oh, See, we're not dead. Yep. There's Space Academy. Locking the torpedoes on the Academy's power modules. A direct hit will disable them. Yes, so do you think they scrapped Space Academy because they had no clear villain? Maybe. Yeah. can be deceiving. It's something I've designed. So Star Especially Command must be oh, using you the the it facilities on the underside of Space Academy. Ship, of gotcha. Uh, uh, <laughs> an X-ray device? You mean that little gadget can do all that? Come on. A gadget? J Jason, please. It's More a doodad. Than... Yeah. <laughs> A true mini robot. This is well, the year 3200. Why, why would he? Why would Jason His be impressed with a w tiny robot in the year 3200? W1K1. It looks like Wiki. <laughs> like Tweaky? <laughs> well, I'm so our get first Wiki, huh? Fine. And he'll live right here. <laughs> yeah. And Don't I do that again. No. Right. Don't touch him. No. Now, this being a year later was definitely influenced by Star Wars. Mm hmm. And probably Battlestar Galactica and. Galactica was 78, I believe. 
Aggression. Mm. What was that? Could have been a meteorite. Attention, attention, this is an alert. Damage in quadrant five, level B. Nicole's in there. Let's go. What about Quadra B level 5? <laughs> Further instructions, Master. <laughs> this is Dragos. That will be all for the moment. Return to the Dragon ship. Yes, Master. And so attacking uh, Space Academy is like a ho like a hobby. Yeah, I'll just, you know, wish you don't want to leave. Okay, I'm calling. Yeah. I'm calling yeah. BS here. That yeah. that one moment right there is more BS than we saw in anything in Space Academy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Jason, you gotta Reaper. seal off that tank. Take care of Captain David. Uh, I'm gonna replace the door there, Jason. No. Okay. He's obviously designed to look like Han Solo. Yeah. Wait, Wait is he? What? Is he some kind of? Superhuman? Is that what the deal is? Now that'll help. What I need now is a laser. <laughs> <laughs> and an inner monologue. <laughs> yeah. He must be he must be superhuman. He must be yeah. superheroic. Do your thing. Do your do your thing. Do your do your stuff. Why does it need to ride around in his pocket? If You're making uh, a mess, Wiki. Yeah, yeah, it's... Not bad. Yeah, that'll hold for a little while Not before it gets you up to Sh Sheboygan. Okay, there was poisonous gas Wiki, escaping from behind that panel. So instead of repairing the source of the gas, they just welded the panel Jason. shut. Jason, are you all right? So Wiki is going to have to live above his no right more. ass cheek forever. Look at James Duhan. Operating normally before the explosion, is that correct? That's correct, Commander. There were no system failures. I can't imagine a meteorite with that kind of an impact. If it wasn't a meteorite, Commander, what was it? Ah, uh, Jason, I don't know, but whatever it was. Has been concerned. Enough. I'm returning immediately. I will report. No, no, I'm not. What's wrong? What do you see? Wow. <laughs> it's <laughs> whatever he's it's seeing. Captain Kirk. <laughs> oh. <laughs> James yeah. James Doohan okay. not doing an accent is kind of disconcerting. Yeah. What happened? He's disappeared. Commander. First we're hit by a mysterious Yelling does not help. Now the commander disappears. It's the commander's emergency locator signal. That is impossible. That's oh, Clarence Nicole, Oddbody. Sure that's what are you talking is? about? <laughs> that's the commander's ident coding. A lot of people praying for the commander. Hold it, hold it. What's this? An alien ship. That's an alien ship with a kick-ass bass line. <laughs> it is there. And you can bet it has something to do with the commander and with whatever hit us. I'm going to find out what. I'm with you, Jason. Not this time, Professor. Eh, that's okay. Along. You can stay here. Almost alone. So, oh, alone then. So I was reading some trivia about Space Academy, mm -hmm. and uh, the cast hated their outfits because they were so warm and constrictive. Because hmm. they didn't, they didn't really air condition the set well. Hmm. So I'm sure that still carried it carried over to this. Yeah. Well, Wiki, it's just you and me. Yeah, Ivory was saying that Wiki looks familiar. That was just a Eddie. dollar store wind-up toy. What are you doing here? I uh, thought you might need oh. some help. Well, as long as you're here, welcome aboard. You're a grown adult professor. 
No sign of the alien mm -hmm. ship. It's not. It's not. Uh, but the coordinates on the commander. It's not a six-year-old boy, like Space Academy. We're more mature. Yeah. Jason, there's the commander. Whoa, he's just in what? floating Whoa. in space. What the? That's a very high belt buckle there. Jason's got his belt yeah, buckle yeah. way up here. What the hell? I'll have to go out and get him. It's not Take how over. space works. Hi, Skipper. Jason, life support on? Life support on, Professor. Be careful, Jason. I will, honey. He's got two belt buckles. And none of, neither of them are on his waist. How? What? What the hell is going on? I don't. Uh, uh, well, this is definitely a lot more action-oriented, but m much more hastily put together. You can tell. Is this how they found Frank Poole and he was totally fine in 2001? <laughs> I guess. Just it, it, inconvenient. Just you know. Say so, okay, James. Just act like you're floating. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm floating. Oh, no. Oh, man, what a workout. Jason, the alien ship. That looks like something from Buck Rogers, you know? Yeah. Or Star, Star, or Star Trek. Okay, the they're just killing time here. Yep. We can't outrun it. That's the same That's interior nice. from uh, Take the commander and go to the mini cat escape. The Space Academy shuttle. That's where we pet company. Mm -hmm. I can't leave you alone. Except this is supposed to be a fighter or something. Yeah. Come on, get going. Yeah, internal same, external different. They're going to the escape pod. Ready, Professor. I'm going to jettison the minicat. Head for the academy and make it fast. Right, Jason. And good luck. Yeah, thank you for the follow, Luna. Say hello in the chat, please. Let, let us know how you found us. Okay, that was the escape pod on the nose. Mm-hmm. But they went to the back. They went to the engine room. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> sense equals no. <laughs> yeah, Carissa says we're thinking way too critically about this. <laughs> but see, Space Academy made sense. Jason All of it made Star sense. Command. It was well edited. <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Show us Sid Haig. I want to see Sid Haig. On. Mm. Dude, the theme music isn't even good. <laughs> Danger hides in the stars. This is the world of Jason of Star Command. Oh, it's his world? Yeah. A space age soldier of fortune determined to stop the most sinister force in the universe. Okay, Kratos, he's. Master of the cosmos. Aiding Jason in his battle against evil is a talented team of experts, all working together in a secret section of Space Academy. Jason of Star Command. Okay, if he's with Star Command, he is not a soldier of fortune. No. That's really bugging me. <laughs> oh. Oh.
This poor guy has all oh. his blood vessels on the outside. Ugh. So did you ever read that Jonathan Harris was supposed to have been the commander? He's supposed to play the same role that he had in Space Academy in this sh in this show? No, I didn't read that. What happened? Did um, you say what happened? So, yeah, he was supposed to have been in there, but since they were making this like 15 minutes long, yeah. uh, Lou Scheimer tried to get him at half the price. Uh, and so when he refused, because yeah. it's like, hey, and who are you? pay me what I'm made, yeah. they yeah. cut him out and hired James Dewan, mm -hmm. who was brought in. Mm. So, there he is. I am Dragos, master of the cosmos. That's a great looking costume. And soon, yeah, that's pretty cool. I will rule the entire galaxy. Never. Star Command is the strongest force in the galaxy. I will allow no one to interfere with my Next plans. Next to Microsoft and Google, Google and yeah. Amazon. You overestimate yeah. yourself, Dragos. Never. And all the planets in the galaxy is evil, won out over decency and honesty and freedom. It's a lesson that tyrants like you have to learn. And they... Oh, wow. Beliefs are insignificant to me. I always looked how furious you Dragos no was. You a problem. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Here's a chair. Yeah. stands between me and my destiny. Roll him by giving him a comfy chair. It too would be And they designed this helmet so you could see his bald head. It was genius. <laughs> Absolute hey. genius. Chew him up. And also, I was reading the original list of Roll, it's supposed to have gone to Ted Cassidy. Remind me who Ted Cassidy is. Of my powers, Lurch. Oh, Lurch. Now. Mm -hmm. I'm glad Sid Haig got it. Yeah. Did, did he try to get uh, Ted Cassidy at half price too? Is that what happened? <laughs> well, you know, he um, apparently the thing is that uh, is that when he was offered the role, um, because he had first refusal on uh -huh. a couple of pilot movies, he was not able to give the producers a direct answer if you wanted okay. to accept the role. Okay. When he finally got back to town, they it was too late. They recast yeah. Sid Haig, but uh, yeah. Ted Cassidy died in 1979, so mm. they would have had to recast him anyway if they'd actually chosen him. Yeah. Oh, there's two of me now. I totally date me. I remember this <laughs> energy clone. He calls it an energy clone. I remember that. An energy clone, Jason. <laughs> an energy clone. Yeah. Exactly like you in every detail, but one. It's mine. He's boring. It's will. It's destiny. No, don't touch it. I know. <laughs> Actor who had to, had to wear the Jason Star Command wig. It'll last only a short time, but long enough to serve me well. Wake and bake, Jason the Star Command exactly Energy Clone. Wake and bake. Is doing at this very moment. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Ivory, those yeah. monsters are are pretty gr pretty are the grotesque. Defense shield controls in working order. Of course. Why? I thought it might be a wise idea to shut them down and run a few tests. Oh, this shut is an energy down. clone. Well, you can't do that. Okay. Especially with an alien ship in the vicinity. Ah, yes, I must have forgotten. <sighs> Perhaps I'm still in the ship. <laughs> I thought it would be a good idea to shut them down. Open for a moment, we'd be completely defenseless. Of course, you're right. That's a risk we can't take. So James Professor, Dewan had to leave this show to make Star Trek Nicole, the motion picture. Mm. I'm Jason. Good, Good call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, they show a lot of ingenuity. They built the they built it into a rock, you know, an asteroid. It's kinda cool. With a tail and stuff, yeah. I could never figure out why why they put giant muscular arms on it, <laughs> and then didn't make the rest of the body. They didn't think to take any of his stuff off. Okay. Yeah. 
I know it. But at least the commander and Parsifal. When you have the Jason. spaghetti mon Dragos monsters as you your henchmen, I guess yeah. that's you know. I, I thought that you and Parsifal. No, Jason. Not me. Oh, I get it. Son of we a thought we rescued space you. Space profanity. Dragos played a trick on us. We sent your energy clone back to <laughs> Dragos the Dragos played a trick on us. Where it? Where it? Where it? What on earth is that? Commander, meet Wiki. Our ticket out of here. Wiki runs on human blood. <laughs> hey, Wiki. A lock in the outside of this cage. So, yeah. so they got they got James Doohan at half price, and he's doing a half job. <laughs> yeah, he gets to wear a cape. <laughs> Eighteen hours later, you haven't seen anything yet, Commander. It's gonna crap out right now. Mm. Oh wait. Oh. Well, we could have flown over there. Whoa. It's gonna be yeah, really see, hot. Don't touch him. Yeah, ouch. Alice Singe. gets a Dracos. Commander, we'll be back. For so, you. is there an energy clone wiki uh, on. Yeah. Do I have an energy clone? <laughs> oh, oh, no, that's not. <laughs> I have that thought. And even no. it's me, it's like, no, yeah. no. No. Meanwhile, like at Space Academy. It... Kids are in the lunchroom. He's still like a Ted, a Ted Knight voice. Meanwhile, <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Master, I am ready for your command. Stand by. And when you have a turban on your head when you do do that. Yeah. Johnny Carson did it best. They put the escape pod back on the on the, the ship. That's still bug uh -huh. that's still bugging me. This is an yeah. emergency. Come in. Star Command, come in. This is an emergency. Come in. Oh, is it then? This is Star Command. Come in, Nicole. I found the alien ship. It's after me. <laughs> Wait, how did she get out there? <laughs> it's getting <laughs> fresh. <laughs> <Come in. laughs> Most of the energy clones enjoy this. Evil Scotty. Yeah. Master Dragos, we are about to capture the enemy ship. Oh, there's a pinball machine. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Gotta love the pin pinball. Oh, yeah. Come on, Shatner. You don't chop. See, that totally looks like a, a game room. I know. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, throw a box. Box on his head. Yeah, yeah, that should work. Right on his head. Oh, or not. Oh, just destroy a random control panel. Damn it. Look at that dragon. He damaged the engines? Oh, come on. Uh, how? Nicole, Nicole, listen to me. The real commander is with me. He was captured by a dangerous tyrant named Dragos. The commander at Star Command is a clone. Stop him. <laughs> okay, got it. Clone. <laughs> He caused all those explosions? They're throwing a box? Oh, that was a neat effect. I like that. Fool. Your interference has cost you dearly and you have accomplished nothing. Yeah. Soon Star Command will be in my control. This is your master. Orco. Yes, Master. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Car Carissa, this is bad. It's it's very different from Space yeah. Academy, isn't it? 
So, Jason is clearly some kind of superhuman, but they didn't explain that to us. Escape from Dragos. Don't miss the next exciting episode when Jason and the real commander join forces in a daring the real commander? to the Academy. Ah, what's he doing to that? Yeah. It's like fondling it. Oh, I just noticed Dragos is... Rotating throne there had like lion legs on the sides. Oh, I didn't see that. No. Yeah. Good. I'm gonna go back. I have to go back and look. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, just like get a. Like yeah, let's yeah, get a. Cool. Ah. Oh, it's got like griffin wings. Oh, oh look at that! Wow. That's really cool. That's really really cool. What a neat I little. Like I like the lights back there. They look like yeah. big, like crystals you get from like a, a video game kind of. Yeah. That's kind of cool. What a neat little gym. They just they just got a regular chair out of uh, out of storage. It looks like mm-hmm. so some fancy looking chair, and they 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 put it on a set it on top of a rotating platform. <laughs> look at that crappy rotating platform they made. <laughs> Like Sid, Sid's like, uh, you may have to tug a little bit more because I'm it's kind of yeah. heavy. Yeah, but that's uh, Dragos nice, has has, nice has utility belt. Dragos has a great costume. I really like the Dragos yeah. costume. Okay, enough of that. <laughs> we can say something nice about it now. Yeah. <laughs> they have good costumes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah Carissa, it, it did look Sumerian. It did look, look uh, mm. yeah. That's true. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. That's it for today's uh, bad Saturday morning. We saw some great Saturday morning, and we saw some bad Saturday morning, all from the same studio, same sets, just uh, two different years, and, and what a difference the the twelve months made. Uh, before Star Wars, good. After Star Wars, bad. <laughs> yeah, even like after scrutiny, I gotta say the original <laughs> Battlestar Galactica, not that good. Mm. I think yeah. it was great. Yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Battlestar Galactica was just like all those uh, those uh, space shows from that period. It looked great. Mm-hmm. You know, the look yeah. of it was great. Everything besides that, no. Um, uh, Iris says, uh, bad or great, it's all it's all fun. Yeah, it was fun. This was a, yep. a, a fun episode. I don't know what I'm going to do for, for next week. I want to do more deep diving into uh, early, early children's television. Because that, that Howdy Doody and Andy's Gang episode we did has, has stayed with me. Um, do you, and, you think you can maybe find some old Captain Kangaroo, like we were kind of talking about before the stream? or um, Yeah. Um, uh, I, I haven't found complete episodes. Heroes. I haven't com- found complete episodes of early Captain Kangaroo. The, mm-hmm. Those may wait until I can find some complete episodes. Yeah. Uh, but I do want to to get into Captain Kangaroo someday because those will be good. I mean, with Bob Keeson, those would be good. Those wouldn't be uh, those wouldn't well, be bad. Uh, I have sure. next week off, so I could do some research if okay. you want me to. Okay, sure. Yeah, see what you can find. Deep dive children's children's programming from what sixties, fifties, sixties, seventies. Yeah. 50s, 60s. Yeah. Um, too much in the, in the, the yeah. I. Ivory is saying her her childhood was in the 1950s. Well, Ivory, do you remember? Uh, do you remember? Um, uh, do you remember Captain Video? And do you remember Johnny Jupiter? This is stuff from the 1950s. Do you remember Princess Mary's Castle? This is stuff that I've been finding from the 50s. Andy's Gang. We did Andy's Gang. We we showed an Andy's Gang yeah. episode. When the captain, uh, Captain Slinky was with us, and it was yeah. painful. It was pure pain. <laughs> you, if you haven't seen that episode, you should go back and watch it because the uh, the racism and the animal abuse were just were almost intolerable. Um, <laughs> uh, there, there's yeah, there's a clip with all three of us with our hands on our faces, going, "Oh my god." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ivory <laughs> says Houston had, had Kitterick. I was on the Kitterick show. I remember Kitterick because I was on it. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, all the little boys were in love with her. Yep. Um, Ivory, 
Ivory says, wow. Yeah, see, when you talk to anyone who grew up in Houston, you bring up Kitterick, people will, people, you can tell people who are from Houston because they'll perk up immediately. And then you tell them that I was on the show, that's the response you get is, wow! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll have to show that next time. Maybe I'll have to, to show that because I have film of it. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. I, I'm surprised I hadn't brought that up before. It seems like it would, it would, it would come up. Yeah, she remembers lots of Howdy Doody and Superman. Yep, yep, the the 1950s Superman. The 1950s Superman TV show had a great theme song, great theme music. Oh, yeah. Um, I thought it had really, it was really well written. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. For having to produce them over and over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Roy Rogers. Um, I- got- I- Ivory, uh, we're both from Houston. Do you remember Don Mahoney and Gina Claire? Do you remember that awfulness? <laughs> it was another local show in the Houston. She says, oh, oh, you bet. Oh, you bet. She says, yeah. Don Mahoney and Gina Claire, they were like local uh, Roy Rogers. Uh, um, soupy Sales. Oh, God, Soupy Sales. I should look for Soupy Sales. Mm, there um, you go. But, uh, yeah, uh, Don Mahoney was like a, like a local um, dollar store Roy Rogers and his wife Gina Claire, and they were just in. Um, they they shot it. I don't know if they even shot it in a TV studio, but it lo- it looked like a a local children's dance studio, a dance instruction studio or something. And and they would just have the the show was just kids coming in doing talent show stuff. Uh, every episode, it was bad, <laughs> uh, but it was on all the time. I remember it being on all the time. And uh, Don Mahoney kept doing that until until he dropped dead. They they, they would they oh. would they would prop him in a corner with his head <laughs> like this. <laughs> 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 oh man. Oh god. How how did we get off on that tangent? I guess we had to at some point. But yeah, uh, yeah eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ivory says, yeah, we love this stuff. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, we'll see you all next week. I won't be doing Saturday movies every Saturday evening. What I'm, what I'm thinking is, and I talked about this a little bit on, on the, on the discord and on Facebook. I'm thinking that I'll do a double feature once a month, last Saturday of every month. So look for, uh, look for a double feature, some sort of double feature last Saturday of this month. I don't know what it'll be yet, but I'll figure it out. Um, and then look for Mike later this week and then come back next Mm -hmm. Saturday morning for something. We don't know yet, but we'll figure it out. Okay. We'll get there. Yeah. Bye everybody. Thank you for coming.